the demand for jazz, uh, as far as getting an audience, is it's not like football or you know. <laughs> have a, a good time when you're playing otherwise why bother you, know, you have to enjoy it you have, you have to have a passion for it playing it. I just love the sound of it. You know? And uh, my dad played guitar. His brother played banjo and they would play all of the what we call now standard tunes. In those days in, in the 30s, 40s, uh, they had big bands and they always had a rhythm guitar. And the rhythm guitar was uh, exactly, you know, it would play along and in four, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, while the bass was playing, and it was uh, the accent uh, maybe on two and four. So that's, you know, that uh, really doesn't exist today. I mean, there are a lot of rhythms, but that kind of rhythm I'm talking about was, was acoustic, basically an acoustic guitar. Uh, there's not much need for it today because, uh, you know, uh, it's just not done. There are no, there are very few bands that are out. In those days, they were traveling all over the country. They're on the radio, you know, and uh, that, that was the dance band. People used to go out and they didn't have uh, television to entertain them. They went out and did things like, you know, some of my first gigs were pl playing with a, uh, uh, a guy named Johnny Long and he had a band. I was somewhat disappointed when I saw the music because uh, they had the chords written in these stock arrangements and I thought wow this is really going to be the big time only to find out that they had this one chord for like four bars you know. <laughs> that, that, that wasn't to me it was a big letdown. At, at that time I already had heard some some alternate chords that could work around but the, the lead sheets and I thought hey this is big time and I have to just play what's written there you know and play that one stupid chord you know <laughs> well instead of playing uh, you know I might play like an E flat I could do anything <laughs> you know whatever Uh, you know, it, it, a little more movement like you would hear instead of you'd hear it. After doing something for such a long period of time, you just kind of improvise. It's kind of like playing an improvised jazz chorus, a single line thing. So, I mean, I hear the chords like I would hear a single note and try to play them and, and have them lead. A lot of the uh, jazz education is just uh, kind of overbearing today I think for, for a lot of students because all they want to think about or think they should be thinking you know about things well you don't think when you're when you're improvising 
you're supposed to be creating and you can't be thinking about, you know, great story about Ted Green taking a lesson from Joe Pass and so Joe played some outrageous line and, uh, and Ted just stopped and said, Joe, he said, tell me, stop. He said, what were you thinking about at that, when you, the play, what were you thinking about? Like you asked me, what, what do you think about? And Joe looked at him and said, nothing. <laughs> so that's it. it's it's almost like uh, like meditation. Yeah, it could be compared to that because you're not uh, you're you're there for the moment. You do you, you just with the flow of the band and, and and of course it varies from one night to another. You know, the nights that you're on or the whole rhythm section is on and you're playing with a great guy that's listening and you listen to each other and uh, those are magic moments those are special those are things that you that you uh, work for